Brazilian fathers. With one of our members going into prison, it is the justice system had to run its course, and it has done so. And I'd certainly like to. Um, was I hope what the judge had to say was very wise, and we hope that this can be a chance for the people who have suffered to move from a sense of justice to healing in their own lives. They have suffered immensely, and this is. May this be the beginning of the process of healing for them. And in no way whatsoever, the Brazilian Fathers have fully cooperated with both in all criminal and civil matters. Father Scott, I know a lot of people are outraged that he's still a priest. Um, can the Brazilian Fathers do anything about that? Uh, given his advanced age, I mean, matters about um, whether a person could be removed from the priesthood um, are handled only by the Vatican. And if he were younger, such steps could be taken, but given his very advanced age, um, once his custodial sentence is ended, we will provide a place for him to live in seclusion and uh, penance until the end of his life. So what even when someone's found guilty of crimes like this, they're still not removed as priests? Well, they can never function publicly in any priestly capacity. All the Brazilian Fathers would provide is a place for him to live in seclusion and in penance until the end of his life. One of the uh, victims said that uh, the Brazilian fathers paid him for his silence. Do you, do you know anything about that? I have no knowledge of that. How do you react to the idea that these offenses happened in high schools in the presence of other priests? This I have no knowledge of as well. Um, one of the huge challenges for us is that these uh, cases, um, as you know, uh, many of them go back to the early 1950s. We have really no records at all that um, describe any of these matters. Um, we're just uh, thankful that Father Marshall came forward and admitted to these crimes. It makes it possible for the people who have suffered to experience a sense of first justice and then healing. So had he not come forward, then you wouldn't have believed the victims? I have not spoken to any uh, of the people who uh, have Maybe forward. not to you, but they've spoken to other people. And as you heard through their victim impact statements, they were either kicked out of school, threatened to be with failure, a whole bunch of consequences. Uh, it was a very different time. The Brazilian Fathers received a credible allegation with regard to Father Marshall in 1996. At that point, he was immediately removed from public ministry and has not functioned as a priest since that time. Um, uh, we um, instituted very specific policies to deal with um, any kind of suspicions of what would constitute sexual abuse. We instituted policies in 1991. and. From that day forward, I am absolutely confident that Brazilian Fathers have acted completely properly in any circumstance where any priest is facing any kind of accusation. I well, have no knowledge, no records dating back to this period that indicate that anything was overlooked. There's just no records to suggest that there was any awareness on the part of the authorities in the Brazilian Fathers with regard to these dreadful acts. The first credible accusation we have dates from 1996. When we received that accusation, we acted immediately to remove Father Marshall from ministry, and as you know, he went to the St. Luke's Center and then was moved to the Brazilian Father Residence in Toronto, where he's lived privately and not functioned as a priest since that time.